the town we now call Frim, which sits on the banks of the River Frim, was not always as it is today. For once, it lay at the heart of the great forest of Selwood, a forest that stretched from the far Thames Valley right across Somerset, Wiltshire, and then on to the Dorset border. Our story begins more than a thousand years ago, the Dark Ages, when Selwood Forest is known to many as Coit Moor, the Dark Woods. Through the ages of stone and then of iron, our island nation was sparsely populated by early Britons. Dressed in animal skins, they worshipped the spirits of the forest, and are not one, but many gods and goddesses. They built hill forts, began roots, nuts, and berries. They hunt the deer, the wild pigs, the birds. For these are the forest people. But then come the invaders. First come the Celts, then the Romans, and then the Saxons. And it is at this time, the time of the Anglo-Saxons, that our story takes place. The Saxons established the Kingdom of Wessex, ruled by King Inna. Inna has recently converted from paganism to Christianity, and a wave of churches and monasteries are built across England. But not everywhere, because out there in the dark wood, the forest people linger on still enjoying their hunter-gatherer lifestyle. Now, King Inna loves hunting. He often rides out into the great forest of Selwood with his party of nobles to hunt the deer there. His deer. He isn't afraid of the dark, dark wood. But he hates the people who live in it. He can't stand them. You see, the forest people live outside of Saxon laws. Outlaws, you might say. They hunt the deer, which Inna thinks of as his own. Worse still, they sometimes leap out from behind the trees, hold up his nobles and steal their fine cloaks and jewellery. Very irritating. What could King Inna do? These outlaws were impossible to catch. Even his fastest men failed. The forest people would just melt into the trees. And no one could tell which way they'd gone. We need to change what these people think. You know what we should do? We should get them out of that forest and into proper Saxon houses, wear them proper Saxon clothes, and, oh yes, pay them proper Saxon taxes, and working, working to grow food for us all to eat. But, how? When suddenly they... Your Majesty! Ah, oh, good to see you, my second cousin Adele. How's that rascal of a father of yours? Lord Kenton, he's very well. I was very sorry to hear about your friend, Madoff. Yes. Yes, he will be gravely missed. He taught me very well. But how have you become quite the holy man this is? Abbot of Malmesbury Abbey now, isn't it? Nothing but a servant to our Lord, just like yourself. Clever and modest. That's you, Alton. Come, sit. Take some meat. Now, as home. You lived in the forest for many years with Madoff, didn't you? Indeed I did. You must have encountered some outdoors. Do you mean the, the forest people? Forest people? Ruffians, frogs and rogues. That's what they are. Feeding my property and eating my deer. You know what we should do? We should get them out of that forest and into proper Saxon houses. Wearing proper Saxon clothes and, oh yes, paying proper Saxon taxes. And working, working to grow food for us all to eat. That's what we should do. Mm. But do tell me, how do you propose to do that? Well, I'm actually glad you asked that question because that's where you come in. Good. So you help me? Absolutely, I will. But be wary. 
These people are dangerous. They just disappear among the trees. Fear not, I will change their hearts and minds. But, but how? Simply by giving them the message of our one true God. If you succeed, I will reward you richly. But take care. Take very great care. Yes, this is the perfect place for it. Dear God, I do all my best duties and try to win the hearts and minds of these strange people. But as soon as I stop playing, they just disappear back into the forest. Dear God, if you've got any better ideas, please let me know. Thanks a lot. Amen. What a beautiful spot. The forest people must think this is a holy place. Of course, that's it! I'll put a magnificent church right here in the middle of the forest. Monastery too. The spring will give us drinking water and we'll name the church after John the Baptist who baptized people in rivers and streams. Our church will be a beautiful place. It will tempt the forest people to leave their old ways and worship the one true God. It's a marvellous idea, Anton. Inspired. But you have to build it out of stone. If you built it out of wood, those forest people, as you call them, would just burn it down. Absolutely. Tell you what, I'll get you the best stone masons I have. They'll build you a church that will last long into the future. Long into the future. Carve into it some animals, serpents, and dragons. It'll make the forest people feel a lot more at home. The outlaws of Selwood Forest were not so easily persuaded. Who knows what gradually changed their minds. Maybe it was the monk's tasty beer and mead. Whether it was the word of God or the point of the sword, or simply that more and more trees were being chopped down to build more and more houses around the church in the growing town of Thrune. One way or another, the outlaws of Selwood Forest slowly disappeared and King Inna and his successors hunted more freely and enjoyed ever greater riches from the taxes they collected. In the year of 709, Aldum died at 69. He was made a saint and to this very day is known as the patron saint and founding father of Froome.